Hey, my name is Michael Andros McGee. I am just here to do some developer commentaries on the various Doom mods that I've released over the past few years. Uh, this is the first one that I uh, actually publicly released. This is UAC Pacific Northwest. Uh, this was me coming fresh off of working on a bunch of Source Engine projects for like Half-Life 2 and Black Mesa, so... Uh, I, I think this is... This has a lot of interesting things to talk about because it sort of follows in Half-Life's uh, design footsteps in a way that is kind of bad. <laughs> I don't really like uh, this map set very much anymore. I think it has some interesting ideas. I like the theme. Um, but the combat is fucking boring. <laughs> so, I'll talk about that. Uh... But as I said, I do, I do still really like the, the theme. Um, I like these tree sp uh, this tree sprite. Uh, I like it's modified from just a, a dead tree that's in base Doom 2. I should also mention that uh, I'm using my <clears throat> I'm using a combat rebalance mod that I made. Uh, I haven't actually released it yet, but uh, I, I need to cut out all of the smooth doom stuff because that's just it's pr something that I probably shouldn't be just publicly releasing. <laughs> uh, Alright, so starting off, we immediately have a rookie mistake. I put all these armor bonuses here right after I gave you a mega armor, and your initial instinct is to pick them all up, because, you know, you can... Uh, it's, it's very rare that you don't want to pick up uh, armor bonuses, but because you max out at 200, you just waste them all. <laughs> Yeah. I will say though that I do really like this MIDI. Uh, it's just a MIDI of the song Rock and Roll Fantasy, which I actually had not heard the real song before I put this MIDI in the wad. I was just like looking up various rock and roll MIDIs that I thought would be good for a, a map one, and I really like this. I think it sets the tone very well. I also hope my audio balance is good. I haven't tested it very much. But I, uh, if it doesn't work out too well, then I'll just change it for the next video. I also briefly want to mention that the major changes with the combat rebalance mod are just put some fall off damage on the super shotgun. Uh, it makes Hell Knights do a little bit, bit less damage, but they're a little bit faster and more aggressive. Um, and uh, decreases the health of Lost Souls, and also, uh, like the chain gun, uh, it nerfs the tap firing, so you can't be 100% accurate with it. Whereas the pistol is now does like marginally more damage, and is also always 100% accurate, so a little bit more re reason to use it. Um, yeah, this combat arena is honestly not very good. It's very, very tight and not in like a good way. And it's more tight in a uh, this is not scaled properly sort of way. Uh, 
Um, one thing I do like about this mod is that I use uh, the system of just using uh, key doors as shortcuts, but uh, some or some mods will just have it just be a key door that is a shortcut. I try to make it so that like uh, there's a room of some sort that it gives access to, so it kind of makes sense in universe. Uh, the added sounds are not part of the rebalance mod, I should add. Uh, it's just something that I had uh, with this map set. It's just like a combination of Doom 64 sounds and also I was trying to make my own sound for the super shotgun. It sounds alright. Uh, there's this completely optional fight off to the side here. interesting though. Uh, so yeah, the main reason that you want to do this fight is just because it gets you uh, gets you access to uh, the backpack. Going into this room, we'll open this, which leads you to this courtyard area that you saw from the other secret. That's it's the second place you can get the rocket launcher. Okay, did did I get the chainsaw from this one? Yeah, no I didn't. I I'm pretty sure you could get the chainsaw in here in earlier versions. I'm not sure if I'm uh my memory is just messing with me or if that is something that I actually cut. Oh, and I was talking about the shortcut do doors earlier, but like this is a, like, you can use the yellow key card that you got here to access this area from the other side, I except this area, you don't need a yellow key card to get into this room in general. What? What the? F like, I made the rule and then I immediately broke it. Ugh, it's dumb. Oh yeah, the plasma sound that the Arachnotron is making. That was the doing of the rebalance mod. <laughs> I, sh I guess I should mention that. Yeah, re replaced it with the Qu uh, Quake 3 plasma rifle sound. Because I just think it, it, it sounds really nice. Very satisfying. Um... really interesting with this with this wad is uh I some even in the more linear maps I would usually try to create uh more than one route uh to any particular area because like you have these two areas going alongside each other and you can like double back to uh fight to go back through and fight and fight the enemies that uh you might have missed uh, on the first time around. And, I, I mean, I, I suppose that's kind of interesting.
Fuck. It's a little bit hard to explain what exactly make makes the combat in this uh, one boring. Uh, it'll be a little bit clearer once I get to uh, uh, my my next one, Phaser Foundry, which is sort of uh, an attempt to like try and remedy the issues of this uh, to try and like learn different different ways of creating interesting encounters. Uh, I think the, the main issue uh, is just that there's not really enough things for the player to worry about at any given moment. I, I like I I tend I tend to be too nice to the player in, in this mod. Here comes some web evidence. And see, like, I uh, drop down evidence in two directions, but, like, really it's just like you're going to see the first batch, and then you're gonna run backwards, and then find the second batch that you actually have to fight. So you don't really have to worry about enemies coming from more than one direction at any given time. It's just. You find two encounters, you have to deal with one now and you have to deal with the other later. And that's yeah, this isn't it's not very fun. Unfortunately the issue with uh uh with what I meant what I mentioned earlier about how I do still like the theme, it makes me want to come back to uh, this map pack, but I... The issue is that I've since gotten used to uh, the UDMF map format, and it makes me never ever want to touch uh, the Doom format again. <laughs> Yeah, some some people really like working in uh, uh, Doom's more vanilla restrictions and can just make one UDMF map and then just say, oh, that, that was fun. I'm gonna go back to the more vanilla stuff now. Now, once I went UDMF, I, I never want I never wanted to go back. All right, so now we have the red key. So let's just go towards the final area that let us move on to the next map. Oh yeah, this is the door that I was talking about earlier. Final combat encounter sort of mirrors the one I made a little bit. There's these, uh, there's this slow opening door thing that's like buried into the ground. But it doesn't take long enough that you can just you can just run out. <laughs> and what, what you'll find is that uh, that first map with the rock and roll fantasy MIDI that was the only one that had uh, a MIDI that was based off of anything not already from a video game. All the others are stuff that I found on uh, uh, vgmusicarchive.com, which I really like using. There's a lot of good stuff there. So yeah, this is like a mini rendition of the, the bonus level stage from uh, Smash 64. And then there's this narrative, I really like this. Uh, just like any other day, you have been rudely awakened from your comfortable nap. 
What struck you as bizarre, however, was that you were awoken by screams of tormented souls and gunshots, rather than the facility security chief. Your grogginess cured by a quick burst of adrenaline, you successfully fought your way out of the UAC's Oregonic Oregonian Shipping Repository. You have no idea what sort of bizarre, twisted experiments resulted in the facility being overrun with monsters, but you do know one thing. They never should have gotten between a man and his nap. <laughs> so the idea is there's some sort of, like, lazy security guard that just found out that, oh, hey, there's a bunch of monsters in the facility and they're ruining my nap. <laughs> Alright. So this is this is one of the maps that I think actually aged pretty well because even though the combat once again kind of fails to impress, I think the layout is really cool on this map, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I, I really like hiding the lost souls in vents. I don't know why. I guess I sort of think of them as like Doom's version of head crabs. Here's a chainsaw. Now I'm talking about how how easy I find this one, but like it I'm starting to get pretty low on health. Here's a big open battlefield. Oh, this can <laughs> this gives me an opportunity to show you one of the really dumb things about this flood. So, I went uh, in the forum thread. I said, "Hey, make sure that you have your compat compatibility mode checked, so that uh, uh, projectiles will uh, hit decorative objects and not pass through them." Well, bullets don't do that. So you can just hide behind a tree and do this. I balance the water around this. <laughs> Game design. <laughs> you can just hide behind a tree and just and just shoot them, and they can't do anything. Oh, good lord. Alright, so, anyway, as we get inside here, I think the interiors of these buildings I actually really like, because, like, they're non-linear, but I, I feel like I use the loops in a very effective way to try and, like, guide you through without it, without making you feel like you're being led by the nose. I, like, it's... Yeah, I, I do. I think I did a really good job of making it feel non-linear without ha ha letting the player get lost. Cause like, it, it's sort of that, it's sort of that idea of making sure that every direction, no matter where you go, is progress. And that button I press in that weird turbine room, sort of like you get in here. And then you can just take the door to get back out. Alright, this is sort of the interconnecting bit between the two buildings. And it's pretty obvious what's going on here. You need to get a key card in each building to progress.
bunch of health potions. Yeah, I, I like... And in, in this phase, I sort of really liked having long strings of health, health bonuses and armor bonuses because I thought that was satisfying. Uh, but yeah, no, nowadays I try to use them more like uh, how Mario games use coins. Like it's to try and like guide the player to areas. Here's the blue key card. I notice how once you grab it, you can't just go immediately back to the area with the locked bars. <laughs> you actually have to fight through this lobby area. I don't. I don't know what this is. Here's the flash, my gun. I didn't even try to dodge that. Where's that chain gonna? Oh yeah, a uh, little little arrows on the ground, uh, sort of guiding you to this secret. What's interesting about this texture is that uh, they were initially just uh, like mid textures I was using on lower and upper bits, and I, I sort of knew what was going on. I knew that like if you uh, did them in, if you use them in that context, it just uh, shows blackness. But I figured like it was an implication of like a grate. Um, but someone told me that if you like use a software render it just breaks so I, I had to I had to make these custom textures with like a, a little gradient um, I want to go backwards here because there's one actually I think kind of clever secret that I did that I forgot to show you guys uh, oh yeah there's this just a slightly darker part of the wall um, so you see these uh, hazard strips we run across here and that lowers this I think that might have been a little bit cryptic because even if you did think to run across it it, it might have been a little easy to miss Anyway. Mm. Here's the uh, classic moment of uh, using the Baron as a door. <laughs> oh, I missed one of the secrets. I must have forgot one. Oh well. Uh, here's the cranny. This... This level sucks. <laughs> so I was trying to go for this, uh, idea of, uh... Uh, having it sort of be like a back and forth between, like, a, a linear map, then a non-linear map, then a linear map, etc. Um... And I, I find that the... The, the non-linear maps, uh, I think... 
it, it works a lot better in this one because the, the linear maps, I just, I didn't take advantage of their linearity whatsoever. I didn't use it to create tighter or more interesting combat encounters. I, I just, I just sort of made them half lifestyle where I was just like, yeah, oh, here's a set piece. But like, because I didn't really have the knowledge on how to use the Doom Engine to do anything interesting, I couldn't really make... I couldn't really make fun or unique set pieces, so it's kind of worthless. And this is an outdoor area that desperately needs some custom textures. You see what I'm talking about with like how how easy this this uh the combat in this mod is to like I'm never really having to worry about more than one thing at a time. Uh, I think if you want to learn more about that, uh, watch watch the uh, uh, Josh Strife plays video on God of War because uh, he talks about how that game does a very good job at like emphasizing the idea of never just having one problem at a time. Oh, I need... Yeah, I need the blue key. Yeah, you see, like, uh, all of the, with all of these combat encounters, everything is always just, there's enemies that are just always directly in front of me. And it, it's very easy to deal with right, uh, right off the bat. Like, that took, that took me, like, three seconds. <laughs> and, like, I... I I don't really have a firm understanding of what, like, what enemies can do to help, bleh, how certain enemies can uh, add to certain situations, or to how to make combat more dynamic. Um, here's a weird secret. Uh, this is a, a wall that's like raised one unit off the ground. I don't think a lot of people caught that, but eh, I, th I think if I like raised it one more unit, that probably would have made it uh, just obvious enough. For a second there, I thought I, I soft locked myself. <laughs> Alright, so that, that's his. Open that up. Some imps up here.
Yeah, you might notice that I'm only, I'm only ever opening one monster closet at a, at a time. Yeah, so, something I, I've come to learn when making Doom maps is that in order to create difficulty, you kind of just have to be a little bit mean to the player. And that, that sounds bad, but like, like there's a certain balance where, like, it, you, you need to be just dickish enough to actually push them uh, without going so far as to just ruin any sort of fun. Uh, what did that do? Oh yeah, it opened this. I completely forgot about this secret. Did I... Oops! <laughs> I doubled to find that secret, apparently. My bad. Oh, look at all these jabronis. Yeah, I suppose the idea here was that... Whoop. So yeah, I suppose the idea here was that uh, you could go through that door and then you'd have to like face an onslaught from the front here at a, at a height disadvantage, but that that's really not how the players naturally can be guided through this map, so... So yeah, this is... This is an attempt at creating an interesting set piece in the Doom Engine. Because you have like these three rows that each each and every one of them has a head, an arachnotron, and a shotgunner. And they they each have a switch that you, that you need to flip to unlock this. And that lets you get the red key. Don't know what the red key is doing here. I don't know. I, I feel like I couldn't make up my mind as to whether I wanted this map set to have like a level of believability or just have it be abstract Doom Engine nonsense. And here's, here's another bit that's really boring. How you have a bunch of caco demons coming out of their uh, fire blue holes in the wall. Which is such an idea that I stole from uh, Tricks and Traps, which I don't know why I stole that idea from Tricks and Traps. I hate Tricks and Traps. I didn't even like it at the time. <laughs> Now you have to uh, rocket all these hell knights in an area where the if you're playing with auto aim, it could just completely fuck you over. Cause so, like the auto aim might make your rocket just shoot into the ground.
And you see, this is what I'm talking about with being too nice to the player. It's like, obviously the best uh, thing for this situation is would just be to take out the super shotgun and just blow away all of these pinkies. So naturally, I just gave the player all the shells in the world so that they could do exactly that. I apologize if me drinking my lemonade came up too loud on the mic. And again, like, this is your final challenge before the exit room, and you just you just blow them away with two blasts of the super shotgun. And like, yeah, it's it's like an episode one thing. Just hide some enemies in the exit room. Just so you have, like, one final confrontation, even if it's not too pressing. But like, I don't know. I, I guess it, it just sort of encapsulates how much I didn't really care about pushing the, the player that much. But that's okay, because... We're moving on to the processing complex, which is another actually good map because I try to be more non-linear. Oh yeah, and this is a this is a fun set piece at the beginning here. If you just stand here and wait, uh, it's very easy to get the chain gunners to in fight with the Kappa demons. There we go. That's sort of satisfying. another really good MIDI. Uh, this is uh, like a MIDI rendition of the uh, Talon Overworld theme from Metroid Prime. It, so it sounds very nice. I have a weird obsession with uh, MIDI versions of songs for some reason. I, I don't know why. I guess the compass room. This is, this is a cute thing that I feel like... Um, so, something about uh, working in the Doom Engine just brings it out of... Uh, br brings it out of newcomers, whether they've worked on, on other games before, games before or not is just, you sort of get an idea, and you're like, ah, fuck it, let's do that. Like, I was just like, yeah, let's make a compass room. So I did that. <laughs> and, like, the little red tip pointing north points you towards the secret plasma gun. Oh, yeah, and the little torches that point you towards uh, which key card you can get. opens up the uh, main entrance. Uh, if you see this little slot here with the tech, it, that lets you get the Mega Armor. I don't think a lot of people picked up on that, but I don't, I don't think that secret is too cryptic. 
a little bizarre, but I, I think it it makes enough sense. Oh, I completely forgot. I was uh, I had turned off the status bar for a different wad. Uh, but yeah, I made a custom status bar with a face and everything. This was actually like the uh, the first time I uh, started messing around with this character that I call Brick Corridor. Um, I wound up using that name for a character in, in a story that I made for my fiction writing class. Uh, this is a pretty cryptic secret. You shoot this window and it like lowers the wall. I guess the implication there is that like you shoot to like break the window. I don't know why it goes back up though. <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> Alright, press this button that lowers that box which lets us get in this vent. Come on. There we go. Yeah, this was uh, something that I was experimenting with. Uh, it's like if, if you went the other way first, you could uh, it would like raise this a lift, and you could get that plasma gun. Um, so the idea was that like depending on which path you choose first, it sort of changes how you interact with the other half of the map. It's really underdeveloped here, but I think. It, it's a good idea, and I want to try it again for some different mod someday. A lot of pinkies here. <laughs> yeah, this this was a more interesting set piece. Like you have this warehouse area with with a fight with a bunch of zombie men, but like then you have like this wall lowering and a bunch of pinkies come to eat your face off. Yeah, I, th I think that. That one could have used like a little more refining, but I think I was on the right track with that. Anyway, we now have the blue key. That lets us raise the first half of the bridge. Oh yeah, yeah there's, there's this part. 
Just... Just... Room full of pinkies. Yeah. Yeah. This is... Not... Very... Not very fun. <laughs> Can you see why I don't like this map set very much anymore? Right, and now we've raised the second half of the bridge. Oh, and you might notice these bars here. Uh, I had this really weird thing at the time where I wanted to make sure all my maps you could play either with jumping enabled or disabled. Don't do that. Because <laughs> jumping, like, uh, is really allows you to sort of like already jumping physics in, in GZ Doom is kind of weird. But like it's it allows you way more mobility than you think so like you really have to make an, an effort to jump proof your maps like if you want to have it be completely optional and so having the completely super but completely superfluous bridge mechanic where you have to both raise the bridge and lower the bars Oh yeah, and there's this broken switch. I don't know why this switch does this, but it just it doesn't change texture for some reason. Whatever. Anyway, but like even after you do that, you can't get through here. You actually need to unlock that area with the yellow key. Which is in here. And it's very likely that you will find this area before you find the door that requires the yellow key. Yeah, you can't. Uh, yeah, this is the yellow key door. And we now have our PFG. Uh, this is actually one thing that I really, I really did like was that I originally placed that teleporter there just to give the player a way out, so you know they don't soft lock themselves. But because I also put the Caco Demon trap there, they wound up getting caught in the teleporter too, and I actually think that. That makes the, this combat encounter just a little bit more interesting. Uh, instead of just blowing away all these Kako demons the moment they come out, some of them teleport over here. And it's still really easy. <laughs> oh yeah, and this is the room where where I uh, understood how BFG tracer effects work and how they absolutely decimate uh, cannon fodder enemies. So, so like, yeah, let's just, we just gave the player a BFG, let's have them just destroy a whole room full of hit scanners, which, you know, I think is kind of fun. All right, and this will lead us to the last map that I had made so far. All right, stepping out of the wreckage of the processing complex, you take a moment to ap to appreciate what you've gotten your hands on. The green shimmer of the most beastly weapon you've ever seen graces your retinas. 
and as you were grinning at your most recent accomplishment, your eyes wandered toward something that seems important. An information terminal details the source of the infestation. A teleportation lab at the peak of Mount Corman. It's going to be an absolute hike to get there, but it's clear the army just isn't badass enough for this job. You want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Mount Corman isn't a real place, I just made that name up. Oh yeah, and I actually... <laughs> I fucking commissioned a MIDI of Sandwich Driving 101 from this Spongebob movie game. <laughs> It's a very good mini, though. Oh, so you'll notice all the snow on the ground in these areas. The idea was that, that you were supposed to be uh, getting up relatively high into the mountains, but like, I don't think I understood how elevation works. Like, it, take, it takes a really long time before you, before you get that high. I can't remember if I already mentioned it in this playthrough, but I'm thinking about uh, revisiting this one and just remaking it from the ground up in UDMF. Because I think I think like my scores with uh, detailing in the in the Doom engine have improved pretty significantly. I mean, I would certainly hope so, I'm trying to, I've, like my major project right now is trying to remake Doom 1 to be as detailed as possible, so. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, this is probably the only the only fight in the mod that actually ever really gives me any real trouble. Okay. There's some Hell Knights on this side of the bridge. I think this is this bridge here is actually uh, a, re a really cool bit that I did uh, within the Doom format's limitations. Because like, there's no room over room here, but I think it still conveys the idea of like this is some overpass pretty well. Well, not an overpass. An overpass goes over a road. You know what I mean. Okay. Uh, yeah, and there's this fight coming up where it's supposed to be like 
really obvious panel that monsters are gonna come out of. And no, it's, it's one zombie man. I think if I had put monsters in both there and there, that combat encounter might have actually been interesting, but nah. nah I had to waste it on a joke. <laughs> a joke that's not even honestly that funny. Oh, I thought there was... An enemy in there. Should have just used the BFG. Man, I really liked using Pinkus in this one, didn't I? I like, I. I'm seeing now that I had, like, such a good setup to do something more interesting by having, like, enemies come from, like, across the chasm. Um, you know, I'm not gonna waste your time with that. Oh yeah, Pain Elemental in, like, the easiest way to take it out ever. Because you're directly in front of it. Armor that I absolutely do not need. Uh, something uh, reminiscent of that that one area at the beginning of the focus. I don't think it really adds anything to this encounter other than just uh, making an annoying noise the whole time. Force full of hit scanners. I suppose the, the challenge here was that, like, uh, like you can't really see them, but they can see you. Because you, you have so much ammo that you can just blind fire through the trees, and it's not really a problem. Uh, interesting little secret: some leaky water. In spectacle creep, I just put this everywhere and give it a reflective circuit. <laughs> circuit. Give it a reflect a reflective surface. Uh and it's not a secret at all, it's just it just looks cool. 
which it does. Don't at me. I don't know what I'm talking about. cabin area and then when you press this button all the walls lower at the cavern opens up a bit yeah I, th I think that that's, that's a cool set piece yeah see see this looks really nice I really like this with like the descending light levels yeah I, I think for the limitations and uh, the experience that I had with the Doom engine at the time, this this looks very nice. Especially with the 3D skybox that I did. All right. When, once again, there's a missed opportunity here to uh, have, have some like enemy spawn in from like behind you or something. Oh, is there someone this up? I don't know what that does. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, I bet I know what it did. I bet the switch was meant to open this up, but I, I like, it didn't put it in properly, so it's just broken. Oh my goodness. That's it, that's, that's the wad. Trail mix and buck shots. Entering the crusher, because it's just stock doom level. Thank you for playing the demo of UEC Pacific Northwest. I'm going to continue adding to this over the next few months. That's a lie, so any constructive criticism is appreciated. All the non-sound custom assets were created by me. Music is from freemidi.org and bgmusic.com. Some sounds were sampled from Doom 64 and a few stock sound websites I don't remember the name of. Yeah, um... Yeah, so... Uh... Closing thoughts, I, I think it was... It was a good start to uh, working in the Doom engine. Uh, I might... I might come back to this someday and like start remaking the maps from scratch. Uh... Because I really do like the theme and the tone of the whole thing. I, I think that, like, it's, it's, a very, it's a very fun aesthetic for a Doom map. It's just, the actual combat itself is that anything but fun. It's just, it, it doesn't really have a good understanding of how to use uh, Doom's uh, roster of enemies in an interesting way. Uh, but luckily, I do have some lighter maps that fix that. And we will get to those later. Goodbye.